All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. And today we're going to talk about summertime bass fishing. This is my favorite time to fish. I know the jet skis and the wake boats are annoying, but I absolutely love summertime fishing. This is this is prime time for me. So stay tuned. This is something you don't want to miss. So summertime bass fishing, um, one of the things that I want to cover, this will be a whole, whole, every bait that I talk about, you need to do this with, move it fast. You want to be able to move that bait fast. Um, this time of year, I'm not looking for those fish that are laying around, has been called a bunch, and they're like, I don't know if I really want to eat that. I'm looking for the dumbest ones that I can find that hasn't been caught a whole lot. I'm trying to just make them see my lure and just react to it and eat whatever I'm throwing. So, the baits that I like to throw. Um, this time of year and any time of year, it's really hard to beat a football head jig. Um, this is one color that I really, really like. Uh, I've won a lot of money off of it. This is a G-Money jig. Um, it's a living rubber skirt. It's wire tied, vertical line tied, and bring this bait through anything. And uh, typically throw a uh, rage tail uh, summer crawl on it. Um, but uh, I'll use that as a trailer 90%, well, 99% of the time this time of year. Um, but uh, I throw it on a 7 foot 3 ducket triad. And uh, this is a medium heavy rod. I really like that medium heavy for a little bit of extra bend. And. You know, I, I can just drive the hook real, real well. But um, I'm typically throwing this thing and I'm hopping it. So during the winter, you know, I told y'all I would drag it slowly across the bottom, fill every little nick. On summer, it's different. I'm actually jerking this bait up off the bottom. I'm trying to imitate a crawfish the best I can. So if you watch a crawfish, they'll be crawling on bottom and then they kick up like this. Well, I'm trying to give off that same illusion with a jig. Um, the reels that I like to use, I like something either a 6 8 to 1 or a 7 1 to 1, 7 5 to 1, somewhere around in there. I don't go to the really, really high speed reels just because I still want that to work that way that I can get the fish up to the boat really quick. And I typically throw 15 pound fluorocarbon on it. Um, I use um, uh, Seaguar and Vizex. Um, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what fluorocarbon you prefer, but that's the one that I use. Now, another one that you absolutely got to... I mean, you've got to have it in your boat during the summer. This is a standard Texas rig. And most of the time, I've got it rigged up with a quarter ounce, and I've got it pegged with a little bobber stop right there. Um, the reason I do that is because I'm throwing this up in cover a lot, and I just uh, the, a lot of times your line and stuff will wrap up if you don't have the weight pegged. It just makes it come through cover a lot easier. Um most of the time, the hooks that I'm throwing is the 4 alt Gamakatsu Super Deep Throat Hooks. And the reason for that is I just don't miss as many fish when uh, I'm throwing the Deep Throat Hooks. Now, if I'm throwing in heavy cover and stuff, I'll use either a 3, 4, or 5 alt Super Line Gamakatsu EWG hook. They're thick wire. I can drive that hook real hard, and I'm throwing 15-pound fluorocarbon on it. I like a 7-foot medium heavy rod. doesn't really matter, and I'm throwing an 8 1-to-1 one -one gear ratio. And the reason I'm throwing that 8 1 to 1 gear ratio, it doesn't have that much torque or anything, but I'm able to take up a lot of line really fast because I'm usually using slack line presentations when I'm fishing with soft plastics. So that 8 1 to 1 helps me catch up really fast, and I throw the dial if you go. Um, you know, you might have your own preference on different reels, but I, I like a high speed gear ratio most of the time. Now another one, and it is really fun, is the buzz bait. Now, this is a War Eagle buzz bait. This has got the black toad on it, and uh, I'm throwing this thing around everything. And I usually throw it on a seven foot medium heavy duck at Green Ghost Rod. Um, I like the Green Ghost Rods. It's one of the cheaper ways to go. I think the rod's like 79 bucks. I, I love these rods. I love the rubber grips. They, they, they're really, really comfortable. But um, I'm throwing this thing with a uh, six, yeah, six, eight to one gear ratio Daiwa. Um, this is the CC80 reel. This is like a 
fifty something dollar reel or sixty something dollar reel. Uh, I'm just I'm downgrading on stuff. I want to try new things. I've been using some expensive equipment, and I mean I'm getting, I mean I'm doing just fine with the lower uh, lower end stuff. So, uh, but um, um, I typically throw it on fifteen pound fluorocarbon. Um, just because the buzz bait's constantly moving, so I don't really have time for my line to sink. So, um, what I typically do with this, like I said, I'm throwing it around brush, I'm throwing it around grass, so on and so forth, and you get some really big bites with a buzz bait. It's hard to beat a buzz bait. Okay, another bait that I really, really like to use is a drop shot. Um, I absolutely love a drop shot, and if you're not sure about drop shots, how to tie a drop shot, and so on and so forth, uh, check out the Blue Line Outdoorsman on YouTube. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I've helped him a lot with his YouTube videos. Uh, he's helped me a lot on mine, especially with editing and stuff like that. Um, he's got some awesome content, whether it's hunting or fishing or whatever. But go on there and just type in how to tie a drop shot, the Blue Line Outdoorsman, and it'll pull up his video. Also, subscribe to his channel, guys. Give him a little bit of motiva motivation to put up more videos. Oh, he, he puts out really, really good content. He's a very, very good editor. But um, I like to throw this typically on a six foot 10. Um, this is an extra fast uh, medium rod, uh, Powell, it's a Powell rod. Um, I've just had this rod for a really long time. It's made just for drop shots, light stuff like that. But um, I typically run the eight pound high vis braid. Um, and then I've got it on, you know, a, a long leader, but um, um, you remember earlier in the video when I was talking about moving, you want to move your bait a lot. So with a drop shot, I want a long, I want the weight a long ways from the hook. You know, I don't want it way down here. I want it, you know, about a foot, foot and a half above the weight. And the reason for that is when I drop that straight down or I cast it out there, a lot of people just drop their drop shot straight down. I cast mine out there a lot of times and I get bit a lot doing that. Um, but I'm actually shaking that rod a lot and the higher that hook is away from the weight, the more action the bait's gonna have. So I'm typically throwing stuff like finesse worms. I'm throwing um, uh, Cinco's or, you know, dingers like I use, um, wacky style. Um, you can throw just about anything you want on it and give it, you know, a good presentation in the water, but you wanna shake that rod. I want it dead stuck, I want my line tight, and I wanna shake it. After I shake it for a little while and I don't get bit, then I'm gonna start dragging it and then shake it again after I dead stick it. Okay, so another one that I really, really like is a spoon. Um, this is a flutter spoon, and uh, this is the Strike King uh, Sexy Spoons. I really like, I mean, you can use whatever flutter spoon you want. This is just the ones that I have. I mean, there's not a big difference. There's just, you got flutter spoons. I mean, it's, I mean if you find one for $2.99, buy one for $2.99. It's gonna do the same thing. But um, I typically throw this on a seven foot six medium action cranking rod. Um, so the reason that I do this is I got that parabolic bend. I do not, if you use a real stiff rod, a lot of times you're gonna take those trebles away from them. I want them to be able to get this thing fairly easy and I do not wanna rip it out of their mouth because you're moving this thing fast. And when I say moving it fast, I'm casting it out there and it'll start fluttering and going down. When your line gets tight, I grab the real butt and I've got the handle and I jerk it just like this two or three times and it'll start fluttering again. When your line, reel up a little bit, when your line gets tight, do the same thing. Just keep repeating that process and if they're there, more than likely they're gonna eat it. But uh, I'm throwing this on 15 pound fluorocarbon and I've got a lose, this is an old reel, six four to one gear ratio. Um, but any six whatever gear ratio will work great. Um, uh, I, I just like a lower gear ratio just because I got that torque if I need it when they get close to the boat. So um, this is a Ducket Silverado rod. Um, I don't know what rod choice y'all use, but I would suggest, you know, a cranking rod for spoons, something long. That way you can make really, really long cast. Now, these next baits that I'm gonna talk about, I'm using that exact same Silverado, but they're different baits. So, one of the things that I like to do, let's talk about if you're fishing a heavily pressured lake. You, you're fishing somewhere that everybody's cranking on, everybody's doing the same things. 
you need to swap it up. Do I mean swap up baits? Not necessarily, but sounds. Sounds can make a big difference on whether or not you get bit during that day. So this is a Strike King 6XD. Now, one thing you might notice about it, you're gonna hear nothing. You're gonna hear absolutely nothing. You know why? Because this is a silent version. This time of year, I like using bright, bold colors and I burn this thing. So a five or six XD, depending on you know how far you're fishing or, or how deep you're fishing, but you know uh, whatever brand y'all like or whatever. But the silent versions make a huge difference, a huge huge difference. Um, it kind of sneaks up on them and just makes them react. Now one thing that I'm doing that a lot of people does not do this time of year, I'm making a very very long cast, and then I'm burning it. I've got the rod in the water and I've got my tip pointed straight at the bait and I'm burning it as fast as I possibly can. I want it hitting everything. I want it going crazy down there because I'm just trying to make them just react to it. So that's one thing that I do with the crankbaits. Now, another big one, jigs. These are hair jigs. These work very, very well to mimic big shad that are dying off. And it's real simple to work these. I'm casting this thing out, I'm letting it sink, and then once it hits bottom, I've got my rod tip held at 12 o'clock and I'm burning it, you know, probably eight or nine times. And then I'm letting it slow fall again on slack line. And you'll know when they hammer it. But a hair jig is a really, really good way. Uh, this is the Cumberland Prayer Jigs. I use these a lot this time of year, but um, that, that's one great way to, you know, catch fish on highly pressured reservoirs. Um, and then you've got your obvious stuff um, that everybody else is throwing. Um, your big old 6XD crankbaits with the rattle in it, the big rattle. Uh, these work great too. Your Apollo DT20s, they all work very well. But, um, you know, the biggest key is, is getting those fish to react. I, I want to move my baits very, very fast. I, I want to just make them glance at it and eat it. So... Guys, that's what I do during the summer is how I catch fish all summer long. Don't forget, if you think the content that I'm giving you is worth your time, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And once again, guys, don't forget what I said. Check out the Blue Line Outdoorsman. He, he's got an awesome YouTube channel. He's a great editor. He puts out a lot of great content. Um, hit that subscribe button on his. Give him a little bit of motivation. Maybe that boy will start putting out some more videos. But we'll see you next time.